in and press this other one this other side in as well so i've been able to set one half of my class it's always good to set one and use it as a guide to set the other one as well so i know that my next one is going to the other half of my class which is this bit let me find the markings and know exactly where that is going to be so no and if it goes on top of it like this it gives me an idea of exactly where that one is also going to be so let me use my pencil to just help me create a little mark on here just to help me know where I'm going to go in with my cutting the same on this side so I've done the hole and I'm going to set this one from inside out so this is going to have the raw the raw edge going to the back so I'm going to have the rough edge coming here at the back and that is why uh, this is where our bow comes in handy so our bow will hide the all these rough bits and they will not be seen so we've been able to set the other half of our bag so we are nearly there at this point you can see the shape of the bag you can see the shape of the bag and you can see that we are nearly there we're getting somewhere if you don't want it to be this bulky on the top you can also spread it apart and go on this side and on this side whichever way but either way we've set one side of our clasp and this is the other side and when it comes on top of it it goes this way okay so we are we are getting there and it's time for us to set our pocket so the pocket is going to be here in the middle if you are not too sure with your positioning you can always fold it onto this side just to find the center of the bag vertically and then also fold it into two and find the center of the back horizontally in that way you'll be able to position it in the right place but if you can just eyeball it and get it centered go for it so this is me now at this point you can decide to run a stitch on your back on the pocket or use a strong glue and i'm going to i'm going to opt for a, a strong glue because i don't want my stitch to be showing at the back side of the bag that will probably add some character to it but that is not what the look i'm going for i want to be able to have a plain look at the back of the bag and not have a stitch going across it like that so i'll go for my glue rather than a stitch so i'm going to put in a, a little bit of markings on this side not too much just so that i know what i'm doing and run some glue on this bit on this bit and on this bit and i'm going to try now and position my pocket on top of it give it some pressure so i'm going to fold this on top of it like that and i know that this is going to go very now i did a top stitch on that but i'll probably just do a stitch here and here and leave the top bit or here and then then let's see what happens i want to stitch with my needle and the help of my stitching tools now that i know where my stitch line is going to be just put a tip across the line you can put a masking tape this is a double-sided tape but i'm using a double-sided tape because that is what i have at the minute but you can use a masking tape so you know exactly which line you're stitching across so the masking tape or your double-sided tape or whatever if you don't want to put a pencil mark in the bag your tape will serve as a guide to your stitch line so i know i'm stitching straight 
on this side. And then flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. You know that I'm leaving about an one eighth of a stitch line. So I'm going to get try and secure the surface of my self-healing mat and then with the help of my stitch tool and my hammer i'm going to go in, in that knot and this is what i'm going to do i'm going to start from this edge so i'm going to let my stitch to the last pin here overlap the edge of the back so you can see that is the, the last bit is not catching this bit here and then i'll go in like that and hit the top of my two to make your stitch hole so i'm sure it's is going through to both i'm going to hit it some more and i'm going to do this and come back to the video because it's going to make quite some noise come back to the video and explain exactly what i did okay so this is what i've done i'm going to bring it closer for you to see it so i've i've put in stitch lines all around it now and you can see that this stitch line has one two three uh, has six um sharp edges so i started from the bottom bit leaving this one so this stays out and then the first one goes in as a marking or not when i've punched in these holes i'm going to move it and then don't forget this this very last hole i'm going to repeat it and put the next the first pin into that same last hole again and that's how i'm going to keep going when you do that it helps you stay on the trail and not move away from it like that so when i finish punching i move on don't forget i'm going to go back into the same hole i ended like that the same hole until i've finished it so i've been able to create my my stitching holes and that will make it easier for me to run my stitch through it i'm going to be sewing with a single thread like that I'll make my knot just a simple sailor's knot. A simple sailor's knot like that. You know, wrap about your finger and bring it in again. Like okay, I'm going to cut the edge of my thread leaving a little bit of length and then i'm going to bend it down okay and start stitching what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go in like that i'm not going through the back because i don't want the knot of my thread to be showing in at the back here so i'm going to pat it and open a little bit go through my first hole from inside and that hides my thread for me yeah go back again and see if i can so going through damn it i'll come back again quietly so And I'm moving on to my next hole. So I'm going to do like a running stitch. I'm doing a running stitch all across it. And then come back again the opposite way. And that's how I'm going to be able to finish stitching everything. True. So let's see. it. So I've done my first stitch going in here. You know a running stitch is when you go in, out, in, out, in, out in that manner. So I'm going to go to the back here. You know. Like that because I did my holes earlier is going to help me guide me so if this is going to be a problem you can go with your machine if that is any easier for you if 
you have a machine that can do heavy duty stitching go for it it makes the job easier but i don't have a heavy duty machine so i'm going to stitch it with my hands and that makes the craft doesn't it so i've gone in one direction with my stitch i'm going to go in the other direction and whilst i go in the other direction what happens is that i'm going to cover in this gap here that i have not stitched so in the end i have a perfect stitch on the side so this is what i've done on this side and as i go over it again i'll be having a perfect stitch on this side i just wanted to chip in you may not have the punch hole uh, to you can also use a tracing wheel so this i had a little scrap hot leather here so as you do it it also makes your hole hole for you and you can see it makes the hole and then you can also stitch along it so you may not you may not have to buy this too you can always go for a tracing wheel and that's another way of also stitching your leather so I'm going to go through the opposite direction now and because we've done the holes already it's easier for us to go the opposite direction and have your stitch in that way okay so i'm doing the other side now with a tracing wheel as demonstration if you don't have the stitching tool for leather you can always use your tracing wheel and the tracing wheel will do your stitch lines for you and that will be it so the bag is stitched that's the inside that's the pocket and that's that's the front bit and the back bit all that we are left to do now is to place our bow on top of it so what i'm going to be doing next is to trace out my bow outline onto my leather and then cut them out so just cut it out gently so that you can have lovely straight and curved edges okay now we have all our pieces together i'm going to assemble them now i'm going to try and do the little bow first so i'll get some uniborn glue you know and it's is good for leather for wood and every other thing so and i'm going to apply just a little bit in the middle here with the, with the help of a stick just put quite a good amount of it in the middle here okay i'm going to fold this over to meet it at the middle trying to make sure that the edges here the edges around here all line up you know what i mean so i'm gonna cut off this little bit get some more glue onto this bit here like that try and spread it out a bit and bring the opposite side onto it making sure that the edges around here all line up beautifully so i'm going to cut it the excess off and then with the help of my craft peg i'm going to pinch them together to give it some weight you know put them together whilst they dry up so this is one half of the bowl i'm going to repeat the same thing for the bigger one and then i have my bow legs or bow tails whatever you choose to call it is fine i'm going to put this in the middle try and center it in the middle 
I know that I have to stick my glue to about this bit, making sure that I'm not adding glue on this end. So I'm going to spread quite a good amount of glue all over this end at the back. So at the back here, spreading glue all over this bit here so that that part stays flat on the back of the bag. So let's try and do that. I'm going to use, I'll use my hand this time to spread it, of course. Please help me spread it all over. I'm going to make sure that I don't catch the other tip. We are nearly there. At this point, you can see that the bag is taking the shape we want it to be. Mm -hmm. Bring the bag back into position and try and put this in the right place. So we are going to leave all the parts to dry properly and then we'll come back and finish it off beautifully so they're a bit dried up i'm going to put a, both of them together like that and i cut a little bit of leather to go around it in the middle just to keep them all together like that then get some glue to stick it on and then get a bigger peg to hold the whole piece together so, Hold it together while it is while it dried up. So the peg gives it some kind of pressure, and when it's done, it's going to go on here in the middle, and the bag is done. So and voila, we are done. Okay, so that's the finished end piece. It's not properly dried, but I want you to see it before. The whole thing comes to an end. So that's the end piece, finished end piece. And that's it. So this can be your purse, your clutch bag, whatever you want to use it for. Yeah. Okay, so this is the end of it. And that is a final project. It can be used as a purse or as a clutch bag. If you liked it, Give our video a thumbs up, like, and share, subscribe, so that you'll be notified when the next video is ready. Have a lovely day until we see you again with our next video.